So after I last tracked that sand down, we cooked the brakes and now we're done. So in this episode, we're gonna fix the brakes and we're gonna give them a bit of an upgrade. So as you guys probably remember from the, uh, from the last video at Sandown, by the end of the day, the brake pedal was completely done. Um, the pads were good for a while, but I think they just sort of overcooked. I think the fluid is done. And uh, I'm pretty sure the, um, the back uh, shoes are probably pretty worn out now. They wear pretty quick, there's not much meat on them. So uh, I hit up my mates at Lux and they have sent us the Ducks Nuts of brake pads for these things, the Winmax uh, W6.5s. So these are, according to Winmax, these are pretty much a rally car pad. Um, everyone who used them said they are unreal. They have a really long lifespan, so you'll go through discs quicker than you'll go through pads, apparently. Um, also, they don't really need to heat up. Uh, the, the pads I've got in there now, which have been great, but they're, they're done now, they really have to heat up. You need about a lap of getting heat into them before they even start working properly. Um, so yeah, these are, I'm pretty excited to use these. Also, um, I went and saw our mate Matty Tuckett at Get Parts, and he has sort us out with some new rear shoes. I don't think they actually make performance rear shoes for these things. I mean, they're drum brakes after all, but uh, we've got another set of those. I don't know if they're worn out in the back, but at least we've got a replacement set just in case. And also we've got some um, better brake fluid. So I am running the Penrite uh, 10 tenths, but just their um, high performance fluid. This is their racing fluid, which gives us, I think, about another to 60 to 80 degrees uh, before boiling, which is pretty cool. Um, a lot of you might laugh, go, well, it's only an XL, you know, it's only got tiny brakes, but that's actually the problem, is bigger brakes dissipates the heat. You've got a big caliper, big disc. Um, you dissipate the heat a lot quicker out of the, uh, out of the brakes. Because this has a tiny little caliper and tiny little disc, everything gets really hot, um, which is why we've got our, our great little uh, brake ducts for sale now. Please order. Um, so yeah, anyway, yeah, they can get pretty hot, so hopefully this will all sort it out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change out the pads and then I'm gonna show you how to bleed your own brakes. So a lot of the time you don't have a mate around, um, so we're gonna do it ourselves. It's very easy. All you need is an empty Coke bottle or something, a bit of hose, and yeah, you can do it yourself in the garage. So I'll show you how to do that. Okie dokie. So what we wanna do is I'm gonna do the, the back first, check out the, the drum brakes, and I wanna bleed the new fluid through. So when you bleed brakes, if we open up our engine bay, here's our master cylinder reservoir for our brakes. When you bleed brakes, you want to do the furthest wheel away from the master cylinder first. So on this car, obviously this is over on the uh, passenger side. And so the furthest wheel away from that will be the driver's side back, this guy. So we'll jack out the back of the car, we'll pop the wheels off, we'll check out those shoes, see if they need replacing, and then we'll bleed the fluid through those ones first, and then we'll do the front. But yes, we want to do the furthest one away from the uh, reservoir as possible get all that old fluid through, because that's the old, uh, we're actually using this stuff, which is same brand, but it's the, uh, it's just a super dot four brake fluid. It's not the special stuff. So let's check the back of the car up and get started. Okay, pro tip and something that has caught me out a few times, because I'm not used to drum brakes, Make sure your handbrake is off before you deal with drum brakes, otherwise they're gonna lock in there and you won't be able to get the drum off. All right, let's pop this puppy off and see what the pads look inside, look like inside. Use your words, Matt. Cool, so the drum's actually really good. It's not worn much at all. Got a bit of dust in there, but that's to be expected. Um, the shoes look pretty good too. I might just go and get the new shoes and just see what the thickness looks like compared to the old ones. There we go. So there's our new one, probably about five, six mil. So they're fine, they've hardly, uh, they've hardly worn, which is pretty cool. So it doesn't matter, we've got a spare set when they do wear. They're not expensive, which is one of the beauties of these cars. Coming closer, you'll see. Um... Come on, come on. Yes, they've still got a fair bit of meat in them. Alrighty, so while I was in here, I've just adjusted up the, um, the shoes on the drum a bit. So, very hard to see, but in here we have a, an adjuster. It's an automatic adjuster, it's, it's one way. So as 
everything wears and the drum and the um, shoes come out, they adjust out. But um, things tend to wear a little quicker than the uh, XL can keep up with when you're on track. So I've just tweaked, there's a little cog in there. I've just brought it around a few clicks just so they're contacting on the drum. Um, and so it should be a little more. The back brake should actually do a bit more now. So awesome. Oh God. Okay, I actually need this bottle for doing our, uh, our bleeding on our brakes. Now usually what you do is, well the easiest way I've done in the past, you have some, you have a mate in the car and you run a pipe off of the, uh, the bleed nipple, you get someone to pump up the brakes, open the bleed nipple, it squirts the fluid out, lock it off, done. So it's much easier for someone in the car, but we don't have anyone. Although I do have my mate Ryan, remember Ryan from uh, all the last episodes, he helps us out with tires and graphics and stuff? Well he's gonna help me today, aren't you Ryan? Worst bit ever. Okay, so all you're gonna need for this is, Ryan, you're gonna need a bit of hose and this bit of hose needs to be able to fit over the, um, the bleed nipple, okay? So you gotta check that. Um, I just don't know where I found this, just a bit of hose, uh, the cap for our bottle, and we just drill some holes. Okay, so I've got a seven mil drill bit here, which seems to be about the same size as the hose. So we'll just find our drill. Pop that through the cap. Ah, don't run away, come back. Bit of house further. And then do it in front of camera so you guys can see. Poke that through the hole. Awesome. Now we just need enough so it goes into the bottom of the bottle. Kind of feels like I'm making a bong here. Look bloody high school again. Cool. So that reaches the bottom of the bottle. And then we'll just get a cable tie and cable tie that in place. Cool, so there we go, we put our hose in our bottle and that sits in the bottom. Now what we need to do is just drill a little hole in the top as a breather, so air can get out as our fluid comes in. Okay, so our, the big thing about doing the brakes and doing it by yourself is you don't wanna suck air into the system. That's the big thing. So we need to make sure our main reservoir is topped up all the time. And the reason we're using this hose in here is we're gonna fill the bottom of this with brake fluid. Now, this is just in case, as you take your foot off the pedal, it doesn't suck um, air back in the system. I don't wanna use the new stuff, so I'm just gonna put some of the old stuff in the bottom, just there as a buffer, just in case. Um, and then we'll try and flush the new stuff through from the front. So we'll just fill that up a bit and then we can get started. Now the big thing to remember about brake fluid is it's hydroscopic. It attracts water. Now the problem with water is this is designed to boil at a very high temperature. Water doesn't. Water boils at you know 100 degrees uh, Celsius. This boils at, well we'll look at the new stuff. It boils at... 316 degrees Celsius. So obviously there's quite a big difference there. Now, if our brake fluid absorbs water, which it does naturally, and then you're trying to use the brakes, any water that's in the brake lines or near the caliper is gonna actually turn into steam inside the caliper and you're basically just gonna lose braking. It's not gonna work. So it's very important when you're doing your brakes, new container, a new sealed container. This is an old container now, it's um, been open for a while. I probably wouldn't use that. Um, you know, for, for actually flushing, we're using it for this little bit in the bottom, that's fine. Um, make sure you've got a new container, one that hasn't been sitting on the shelf. When you're not doing stuff, make sure your cap is on, uh, because there's, there's water in the air, there's moisture in the air, and it will be attracted to the brake fluid. Um, and we don't want it in our system. So now, let's get started with bleeding this system. <clears throat> okay, up in the engine bay, where all the exciting stuff happens. Uh, with our master cylinder, I've got a fair bit of fluid on there in there. What you can do is use a syringe or some sort of like a turkey baste or something like that to suck a bit of your old fluid out and then we can put the new stuff in. Um, I don't have anything like that on me. So what I'm going to do is carefully pour the new stuff in over the top so it doesn't stir it all together. And then as the fluid levels go down, I'll keep topping it up 
so it uh, it just brings the new stuff through and doesn't flush, so it doesn't mix with the old stuff. So we'll open up our new bottle. Okay, so we have our new stuff here. Uh, now bear in mind, brake fluid is also very damaging to paint. So make sure you don't get any on your paintwork. I'm going to pour that in slowly and fill it right up to the top. So we're going to flush it through. The main thing is when we're flushing this through, we don't want this to get low because it'll start sucking air in and then you've got to start all over again. Make sure we put our cap back on and we don't want to leave our caps off. Okay, so we just set Ryan up here. So he's uh, ready to catch fluid and the tubes in the fluid in the bottom there. Uh, we've just put our hose onto the bleed nipple there, which is just around the back. Um, this is a weird size. I think it's an Imperial thread because Hyundai. All the cars I've worked on before, it's been a 10 mil, but you know, Korea. So, just open that up. Doesn't need to be much, and you don't want to do it too much, because if you open it too far, you can suck air in through the thread around the outside. So now that's open, we get in our car, making sure we're all safety up with our jacks. I'm going to take my steering wheel off. So now we just press our brake down to push the fluid through. You can feel the pedal go soft. And then we just bring it up nice and slow. So hopefully it'll pull fluid from the reservoir and not back through the system. And we do that for a while until we've pumped new fluid through the system. Well, you can see now, the best thing about using a clear hose is you can see all the, um, all the fluid coming through. And the good thing is about this, this is this fluid's not that old, but if you were doing this to an old car, um, you would see the color of the fluid, it'd be filthy. So anyway, we're gonna do this for a bit more. The, the brake lines are very thin, so they don't hold a lot of fluid, but we'll do this a few times, flush all this through, some new stuff, and then we'll move over to the other side. Okay, the big thing to remember when you're doing this is to keep an eye on your reservoir. You want to keep that topped up. It sucks air through the system, you're going to have to go through the whole thing again to get rid of all this fluid, or all, all the air in there, and that's not good. So make sure that's topped up. Just keep going, keep going. Okay. Okay, and we're done on this one. So you can see there's quite a lot of fluid in here. I pumped a lot through because there was still quite a bit left in the, uh, in the master cylinder. As I said, in the perfect world, I'd have a syringe and I'd pull a lot of the old fluid out, put new stuff in. I don't have one. So yeah, we've, I've pumped, I sat there and pumped quite a bit through. So hopefully that's cleaned all the old fluid out of the lines. I've now just um, pinched that up. I hate using adjustable spanners, but I don't have an Imperial one that fits. It's just small, too small for a 10 mil, so I'll end up stripping it. But that's done. So now, what you're gonna do is just pinch the hose, pop the hose off, and we move to the other side. And that's the back done. So we bled the system through. We actually got a bit of dirty uh, fluid through there. You can see that color in the middle of the bottle. So that came out of that side, so I possibly didn't bleed this side properly when I originally did the car. So that could be very, very old fluid, 20 year old fluid in there. Um, all good, I've adjusted up, so I just tweaked the, uh, the adjuster on the drum, so that's just uh, a bit, bit better now, a bit more grabby. And uh, yeah, we'll put the wheels back on, get the front of the car up and do the fronts. So we've got, uh, got the car up and the wheels off. This is all pretty filthy. It's uh, done quite a few track days now and it's starting to look a bit gross. Also notice I've got a tiny bit of an oil leak underneath, but that's, uh, that's future Matt's problem. It's a problem for another time. So what I want to do is we're going to change out the pads. So we'll pop this caliper off. Uh, from memory, it's a, it's a 12 mil on the back. Take that off, uh, pull the pads out, we'll have a look at them. And also I just want to give this uh, disc a bit of a clean up. Bit rough but not too bad just get some of the crap off it before i put new pads on it and then uh we'll give that a bleed also i want to clean the inside of the wheels some of the grease from the the brakes from the last pads you can see it there sort of got on the inside of the wheels and they're gross so i'm going to give them a wash as well while they're off let's get going <music> Oh, 
Holy crap. Okay, so this is what happens when you heat cycle pads that probably weren't designed for it. That's pretty much just breaking up and disintegrating. You can see I've used quite a bit of the pad already. I've probably about halfway through them. But that's, um, yeah, that's had too much heat. That's pretty buggered now. So they are ready for the bin. They're actually starting to delaminate off the plate a bit there too. So they definitely are done. In the bin for you. You serve me well, but you are shagged. Let's have a look at the back pad. There we go. The back pad's actually not quite as bad. It's still broken up a fair bit. It's actually got a crack all the way through that one too. So yeah, you are done, son. Okay, here are our shiny new Winmax 6.5s. Um, yeah, hopefully they go a lot better than the old crappy ones. In the defense of the old pads, they weren't designed for racing. These are actually race specific pads designed for this. The uh, the ones we took out of there, the ABC yellow stuff, they're a good pad and it'll be fine on the road, but uh, when you're abusing the crap out of them on the track, they're not quite up to spec. As these things are designed for it. Okay, new pads are in. Now what we need to do is just push the piston back because we've had wear, so you can see how the piston's out a bit. So we'll just use one of our old pads and a G-clamp and just slowly push that back in. You've got to remember to take the cap off your reservoir, which you already have because we bleed the brakes. And if your reservoir's full, put a rag around it to catch the brake fluid that might spew out the top. Okay, so we've got a G-clamp and our old brake pad. So just pop our old brake pad in there. And we'll just slowly push the piston back out. You've got to do this nice and slow. So you don't damage any seals. As I said, make sure the cap's off of the master cylinder. And if it's full, like mine is at the moment, put a rag around it to catch any brake fluid. Mine isn't overflowing yet. I don't know if I mentioned, the reason we're doing this is because the old pads were worn thin. And if you're doing this on a road car or just a race car that's been used a lot, the pads are going to be really thin, so your piston's going to be all the way out. So you just need to get it back in so you can fit your new pads in. There we go. That's all the way in now. Get rid of our old brake pad. And with any luck, slide that back onto the pin. Should fit right over. That's awesome. And then we've just got a bolt, make sure it's all clean. It's got some high temp grease on there. It stops everything seizing up. Put the bolt back in, do it up. And then we can uh, pump the brakes and bleed this caliper and get the fresh stuff through. Here we go, you can see here, because we push that piston back, the reservoir is right at the top now. It was about that low. Now it's gone, come all the way up. But once we pump the brake, that'll push that piston back out a bit, seat those pads, and we can uh, bleed it. So we'll pump the brake a couple of times. There we go. So that's now the pistons just come out a bit to contact the pads. And you can already see our fluid level has dropped about four or five mil. Awesome. So now we'll get our, where's Ryan? <laughs> He's always running around the garage somewhere. There he is. Come on, Ryan. Time to do some work. Okay, you guessed it. This is pretty much exactly the same as doing the back, except here we have a caliper instead of a drum. So blade nipples on the front here, give that clean off. I usually just give it a bit of a crack first, just to get it loose and then we'll put the pipe on and put Ryan to work. That's 
get right in here, put the hose on, and then we'll just, uh, just crack him open a notch. You can actually see, if I can get you in there, the colour of the fluid coming out of there is actually a lot darker and pretty gross. Sweet, now we just play the bleeding game. Cool, and that's bled. We've pumped through a bunch of the fluids. So we've got the new stuff in there. You can see our reservoir is going down now, so we can top him up with our new racy, racy stuff. And remember, we are doing them in order of how far away they are from the master cylinder. So we did that back corner, then we did that one, now we're doing that one, and then we'll finish off with this passenger side last. It's actually pretty rare for the master cylinder to be on the passenger side. Once again, weird little Hyundai. Usually the master cylinder is in front of the driver. But this car is a weird bar that goes across to transfer over the pedals. I'm guessing because it was originally designed as a left-hand drive. Who bloody knows? Okay. We're all topped up there. I'm happy with this. Let's tighten this up. Cool, and we're done, let's do the other side. Righty, and that's it. That's our, uh, we put our wheels back on. The only thing we've done um, since then is just uh, top up our reservoir. I've pumped the brake a few times just to bring up the pressure. Check the reservoir for um, fluid, make sure it's at the max level. Um, and then after that, what we need to do is bed the brakes in. So all brake manufacturers have a bedding in process. Some you don't have to bed in. Um, this one, so Winmax have a whole sheet here that tells us how to bed in the brakes. Uh, it's all sorts of stuff. It's usually just heat cycling them uh, without cooking them. So you know, go to 120, break down to 80, go to 70, break down to 40, all sorts of stuff like that. But anyway, you get all the information with your brakes when you get them. Um, make sure you do that because if you bed them in properly, it means it's going to uh, the glues that bond the material to the backing plates isn't going to freak out and come apart and your brakes will last a lot longer so make sure you bed them in properly. Um, yeah, we're done. That's pretty much me ready for Broadford now. I'm really excited about that. That's our next track day. It's in a week and a half and I've never been to Broadford. I'm really excited about that. Our friend Tara's coming with our BRZ. She's a legend and I'm looking forward to getting on track with her. She's been there before so she can show me around. And uh, yeah, we'll see what times we can get out of this puppy. I've even preempted our Broadford day by having our Broadford map here waiting for a time. So I'm looking forward to it. It's a cool little track. It's actually designed, um, it's a motorcycle complex. So it's designed for motorbikes, but for a small car like this, that's unreal. Um, anyway, we'll uh, do a cool video for that. I'm gonna do something a bit different for this video. It's not just gonna be another track day. We're gonna do something a bit different. So uh, keep an eye out for that and we'll uh, see you then. Thanks for watching guys.